How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Now, yesterday's game, don't want to talk about it. Scoring one run against the Oakland Athletics is about as embarrassing as you can possibly fathom in this life, in this reality, in this world, the Earth, planet Earth. One run against a team that has won 20 games and lost 60. That is uh, mind-blowing. It is frustrating to be beyond belief. But we want to take a little bit of a positive spin here because I'm tired of talking shit about the Yankees. I'm tired of getting all negative about them because we could sit here all day and rip them apart as we've been doing the past couple weeks. But I want to focus on one specific player, Anthony Volpe, who's completely turned his stuff around lately. He's kind of reverse course. And go figure – it was him and Austin Wells who figured out that his swing was a little bit off. You know, his hips were getting swung wide open. Um, his fundamentals were off. He, his stance wasn't right. He fixed it. Since then, he's been on fire. We're going to give you some insight into his statistics over the last two weeks, why he's been performing so much better, and the outlook for the foreseeable future. But, Ryan, before we dive into Anthony Volpe and what he's been doing lately, how you do today, my friend? I'm doing all right. You know, I'm doing about as okay as you can after, as you mentioned, yesterday's game. But I think the big positive that everyone's going to point out and that we're going to talk about is Anthony Volpe right now. Anthony Volpe is one of those players that, you know, unfortunately got off to just an out, not didn't get off to a bad start. He, he started okay, but then just gets off to like just an absolutely terrible stretch. And, you know, it felt like it was helpless for a while. You know, I was sitting here, I'm going to own it. Um, And I'm, I'm going to just say it. I, I was sitting here slamming the desk saying, why is he still here? Why is Peraza not here? Now, I still do believe Oswald Peraza has major league viability. And I still feel strongly about the fact that I think Peraza should inevitably become the shortstop and move Volpe to like second base or whatever. Um, But in terms of offensive profile, Anthony Volpe does a lot of things well in terms of quality of contact. In terms of sweet spot percentage, which is the amount of times you have a batted ball between the launch angle of 8 and 32 degrees. Why is that important? Because a lot of balls hit in that range of launch angle do really well. So, you know, when you have a batted ball that typically performs well and you get to that uh, place uh, consistently, you're going to have good results. Even that line out to second base, like that was a rocket. That ball was absolutely torched. Um, his hard hit rate's better than league average at 43.9%. Um, his exit velocity is better than league average, 89%. 0.5 miles an hour on average. His barrel percentage is better than league average, 9.2%. It's really just a matter of making better swing decisions, being a, a smarter hitter at the plate, um, you know, and being more fine tuned, right? And you feel like those are things that a rookie can correct over the course of a season. I also feel like he's getting a little sharper defensively. Um, you know, I know he still has negative two OAA, but he has plus six defensive runs saved and a positive UZR at 3.5, at 1.4, excuse me. Um, so, you know, I think those are positives as well. You know, when two out of the three big defensive metrics say you're a good defender and the other one says you're slightly below average, I'm going to be inclined to believe you're a good defender. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, but you know, end of the day, when you're making, when you're making strong quality of contact, that's more of a talent thing, right? You know, like not everyone, everyone can hit the ball as hard as Aaron judge, right? Barrel accuracy, things like that. Those are things Volpe are excelling at. It's just a matter of, you know, making better contact. The swing decisions have to get better. His chase rate is too high. His whiff rate is also too high. Both of those numbers have to come back to norm. They're still pretty high in this stretch. Like he's, he has a swinging strike rate of 18.4% and a chase rate of 37%. That's not very good. Um, but if he can get, if he can make better swing decisions on top of the adjustments he's made with his stance, I think he's going to really put together. I think this can be an, a pretty good ball player. Um, and I feel pretty confident saying that. So, you know, it's a matter of swing decisions. But as you mentioned, this new stance kind of changed the course of how I feel about Volpe's swing as a whole. I mean, look, it's kind of disappointing that our batting coach didn't figure this out before and it had to come down to a chicken parm to get it done. Um, but we're happy it did. You know, we're happy that Austin Wells, who should be in AAA right now, banging the door. And Orion, you're a big Austin Wells guy, and a lot of people are. A lot of people are asking, why Why is the kid still in double-A? He deserves to be in triple-A. Uh, you know, obviously, we don't know why. Um, we're just speculating. And, you know, Volpe has turned things around to a degree. Over the past couple of days, he has really picked it up. Now, Anthony Volpe hitting 203, 282 OBP, um, definitely not impressive. You know, he has 10 homers, 25, 28 RBIs, and 15 stolen bags. He actually had his first caught stealing yesterday against Oakland, kind of a ticky-tacky play. I feel like it could have gone either way. Um, but, you know, the 30.6% strikeout rate certainly kind of stands out, but he is walking at nearly a 10% clip. So if that strikeout rate comes down a little bit and that walk rate goes up a little bit, you know, his, his WRC plus is going to improve it right now. It's at 81, which suggests he's 19% worse than the average MLB player. But it was like 70, like not too long ago. So he's been climbing the ranks in that regard in June. 
He's hitting a lot better than his season averages in 233 with a 313 OBP 400 slugging percentage. But guys, this is where it gets interesting. Over the last seven days, Volpe is hitting 400 with a 526 OBP 667 slugging and 1193 OPS. Over the past 15 days, a larger sample size, I think it's about 38 at bats. He's hitting 314, 415 OBP with a 514 slugging. So it has been uh, sustained over the course of two weeks, a little bit more than that. So that's a pretty good sign. And that's kind of right when he changed the batting stance, right, Ryan? So you're looking at a player that has corrected some issues here that ultimately were plaguing his contributions. Um, now, you know, Ryan, when you're looking at Anthony Volpe, he has a higher WRC plus than Carlos Correa. I know you kind of tweeted that out yesterday, which is definitely exciting to consider because a lot of Yankee fans wanted Correa this past offseason. Um, what do you think the foreseeable future looks like for Volpe? I think that he's starting to gain some confidence. Uh, do you think that you keep him in the nine role, keep him there, building his confidence? Do you think there's an opportunity for him to kind of jump up the order here to be that kind of primary leadoff guy again? Because um, if he gets hot, you know, we need him to be in a primary spot. Ultimately, you look at the offense right now, it's lackluster. A lot of our, our like expensive veterans are not performing. Stanton is not performing. DJ LeMahieu is not performing. If Volpe starts hitting, do you consider elevating him up to that leadoff spot once again? That's a really good question. So, um, you know, I think the Yankees uh, kind of for, you know, really since LeMahieu uh, got hurt last year and we saw him not play to the level he should have been playing at when he came back from his toe injury last year. And then obviously this season has not been very good either. Um, you know, those two stretches right there, you don't have a leadoff hitter. Right. Um, Anthony Volpe spent some time in the leadoff spot, then he cooled down. I think Volpe has to show me that he's capable of making better swing decisions first. Um, you know, you mentioned this with you kind of hinted at this when you mentioned like it took a chicken parm dinner, which by the way sounds phenomenal. Uh, I could go for some chicken parm, but you know, uh, it, it shouldn't come down to that. It should come down to the organization being able to make those tweaks. And as a whole, the Yankees struggle with swing decisions. They make really bad swing decisions, not like okay ones, not, you know, oh, they're middle of the pack. They make really bad swing decisions. And when they do make, you know, when they do make those swing decisions, they're oftentimes missing hittable pitches uh, or they're swinging three and O, which they should never swing through. There's not a single guy in this line who should swing three and oh. Um, I don't care who's hot or who's not. Like Volpe's been on fire lately. He should never swing three and oh. If he swings three and oh, uh, someone's got to get benched. Uh, like I've seen Torres swing three and zero, oh, um, and, and I this is not even like an issue with Torres, but like the Yankees have to make it clear that these guys should not be swinging on three and zero, oh, or these guys need to be more patient at the plate. I don't want them to outwardly say it. Obviously, you don't want to outwardly say, "Yeah, by the way, everyone else in the league, we're going to swing less." So just letting you guys know, right? But an, an internal conversation needs to be had with you know, hey Volpe, we got to swing less so that he can be that leadoff guy because earlier in the year, that's what Volpe did really well. Made pitchers work. Pitchers would have to throw a million pitches at him. Uh, he'd work a lot of walks. And even when he didn't find his swing, because in the beginning, he didn't really have his swing there. Like, he couldn't generate much power. It looked bad to start it off. Uh, and I was concerned about the raw power early. Um, but, you know, you're still able to manage a decent OBP and get the job done. Um, he had a 333 OBP on, you know, April 25th. And he was struggling. Um, and that's due to good plate discipline. We've seen him had good have good plate discipline. That's what he's done his entire minor league career. So the Yankees need to make it a priority for him to do that so that he can become the leadoff guy. Because if you imagine Anthony Volpe, who's you know around a 340, 350 OBP with his great speed, that right, that's I mean, that's your leadoff hitter for the next however many years he's here, which you hope is a very long time. And that was what you game planned. That's what we were thinking the Yankees would have in Anthony Volpe at some point during the year. We didn't know exactly when. Maybe it was the next year thing, but um, they need to emphasize Anthony Volpe chasing less. I want to stress this. If he does not chase less, this will just be a hot streak. It will not be sustained success. The first step is finding your swing. The next step is making good swing decisions. I implore. I, I don't care how it has to happen. Just find a way to get Volpe to, to, to swing less. It has to happen because that's really the next step for him. And that's when you, you know, as you mentioned, now he becomes the leadoff hitter for this team, the, the table setter, the tone setter, the reliable guy you can go to and, and just pencil at the one spot for the next decade. You don't even worry about the hot and cold streaks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, this is a 22 year old kid, guys. The fact that he is, you know, getting hot right now, at least is indicating he can turn things around. That's not, you can't say that about a lot of our other guys. Stanton, let you have, you know, referenced them earlier. They're not turning it around, they're struggling still. Um, Donaldson had a home run last night, but God forbid you look at his other numbers. It's, hor it's horrific. It's, um, discussing. It's something I'd rather I'd rather stare a, a paint that's drying on a wall than watch Donaldson play baseball at this point. Um, among a lot of other players in this team, that's not just a focusing on Donaldson. It's it's a kind of feels like a an illness that's going through this team that nobody can shake off. No matter how many vitamins they take, no matter how much rest they get, 
it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter. They can't turn it around. Is it age? Is it confidence? You know, it seems to be, it's not, uh, like a physical thing because all these guys are healthy. Stanton, you know, he's back from the hamstring injury. DJ LeMay, who continues to say he's healthy. All of them continue to say that their confidence is fine. Like they're just they're just kind of struggling um, with seeing the ball, you know, decision-making and whatnot. It might just be a really bad cold streak. It kind of like, you know, when it rains, it pours type of situation. Um, so we'll see. Like this team, the only way this team is making the playoffs, and because Aaron Judge is probably going to miss at least another month at the minimum, the only way this team is making the playoffs is if our players right now that we have on the roster – Step that the hell up. That's the only way, guys. There's no other way. Our pitching cannot sustain the level of success they've had. You know what I mean? At some point, we're going to start giving up four or five, six runs a game for a couple days, and we can't score more than three or four runs. You know what I mean? Like one run against the Athletic is like, okay, we get let up a, a, a maximum of four runs against the Texas Rangers, the hottest team in baseball right now, arguably the hottest team in baseball, maybe aside from the Braves. You know, that is ridiculous. Our pitching stepped the hell up. It's the only reason we're winning games right now. Nothing to do with the offense. So Anthony Volpe getting a little hot right now. It's essential. We need him to start hitting. We need him to start doing what he does great on base, stealing bags, getting in scoring position. The problem is the Yankees are the worst team in baseball with runners in scoring position. So if I'm Brian Cashman, what am I looking at at the deadline? A player that is good with runners in scoring position. I feel like that makes sense, Ryan. You know, what are your thoughts about that? If that's something that you think uh, Cashman will kind of focus on the deadline, a player that hits well in high leverage moments. Yeah, so leverage stats are always weird because, you know, typically, especially like at this point in the season, right, like we're in June, right, and it feels like it's been the longest season ever because this offense does not hit. Um, but like a lot of guys have leverage stats and it's like 25 to 35 plate appearances. The Yankees, they really just need a guy like they need someone who's got a long track record of hitting. They're going to need someone who can do that. I don't. And the problem with this deadline is they don't really have, uh, you know, those superstar or even star level bats like you know we're talking about lane thomas lane thomas's track record suggests league average hitter this year is the aberration year do you buy high on that right that's a tough conversation to have because if you trade anything really important and you buy high and then he go goes back to what he was in his, his career you lost that trade, and the Yankees have lost a lot of trades doing that, right? I, I suggest a guy like Heimer Condelario. Is Heimer Condelario taking you from, you know, right now, which is a team that's projected to barely make the playoffs and finish in fourth place in the American League East, according to fan graphs? Um, is that going to elevate you from that to like, hey, this team is like the third or fourth best team in baseball? Probably not. And I, I, I'm going to sit here and own that too. Like, I, I would like to trade for Heimer Condelario. I'd like to trade for Lee Thomas. I'd like to trade for, you know, a million guys. But are, is any of those guys individual? doing that for you no you're gonna need a, this offense to be retooled like i don't really know if the offense necessarily has um the talent currently there to turn it around and you're right that that's the only real that's really the only way for them to do it without massively changing the roster um and you and i discussed this before the podcast and this is the why it's so important for anthony volpe to develop and become that guy the yankees have a lot of money poured into their depth or like, you know, their depth hitters, the guys behind Aaron Judge. And none of them are particularly good besides Anthony Rizzo right now. Josh Donaldson at negative 0.1 war. John Carl Stanton, negative 0.2. DJ LeMahieu, 0.2. Aaron Hicks, negative 0.4 with the Yankees and not on the team. Uh, when you throw Anthony Rizzo in there, that's $92 million. That's more payroll than the Orioles and the Rays. That can't happen. Um, you know, I, I don't believe the Yankees process is horrible. I don't think the Yankees are a terrible organization. I mean, as you mentioned with the pitching staff, you don't develop that good pitching or you don't have pitching that's that good if you're a horrible organization. Um, but, you know, is the process really as good as it should be if the results have never really been there? I think that's a question um, that's fair to ask, you know. I understand. And I think, you know, you and I try to, you know, balance the line of, you know, understanding as a fan being frustrated, but also understanding as an organization that it's you're playing the long game. And in, in a sense, I, I think you and I can, you know, preach this or we can, you know, we can agree on this, but it, it does really feel like, you you know, whatever you add to this team is not going to be enough. And it, it feels like a lot of the flaws they have are self-inflicted. They're very injury prone. That's on them. They're the sixth oldest position player group in baseball. They were top five in uh, variance because of injuries in the rotation coming into the season. These were things that the Yankees are a high variance team. This is a team that can be very boom or bust, not just in the home runway, but in being healthy and playing games and having good outcomes. John Carlos stands getting old. DJ LeMahieu is old. Josh Donaldson is old. Anthony Rizzo's getting old. Like these guys starting to decline a little bit and not be as reliable. 
that's not necessarily unpredictable. That was all in the cards, and that was all definitely possible. Unfortunately, it seems to be happening at the same time, or you hope it's just a slump. But, you know, that's the roster construction you're dealt with. Those are the cards you've played, and that's the situation you're in right now. I definitely think Anthony Volpe at least is a bright spot in the sense that if he's able to turn this around and then you have some of your other top prospects come in, you know, Rizzo's off the book in a year, Donaldson's off the book this year, Hicks is off the book in two more two years after this, LeMahieu I think has th- two years after this if I'm not mistaken. You know, you start to see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel some of these contracts, but end of the day, you know, right now it doesn't look very good. No, it certainly does not, but that's not our problem. That is Brian Cashman's problem, and we hope to God he can figure it out because I cannot stand to watch this team go through this type of issues again. And and you know what? You know what it really comes down to? Our homegrown talent becoming stars. We haven't had, aside from Judge, and, you know, I I don't even really say – Glaber Torres is homegrown because he came from the Cubs. You know, it's like it's tough to say, like, how many players we've had that are actually homegrown that have become stars. Like, Volpe is – is far from being considered a star. He was a star prospect, but he wasn't, he's not a star at the MLB level. Judge is the only one, you know, you cannot have sustainable championship contending teams without homegrown talents. You cannot buy your way to championships because a lot of players don't know your game. You know what I mean? Like you develop players with the mentality, with a mindset. The problem is the Yankees, the last couple of years have been developing players with this, like slugging mentality, a slugging mindset, like home runs above all. And Look at the teams that beat the crap out of us. They play they play simple baseball. They hit around the bases. They get on base. They hit for base hits, extra base hits. You know, the Rays do this to us. And and they hit home runs too. You know, it, you don't if you're ranking fourth, fifth in home runs the last couple of years, what has that gotten us? It hasn't gotten us to a championship, it hasn't even got us to the World Series. So to me, it seems like our, our process is flawed. I feel like we need to change that. I don't know what they're thinking. Probably not to change that. But we'll see what happens, guys. I'm always happy to hear your perspectives below in the YouTube comments. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe. Enjoy the game tonight. It's a late one. Hate these late games on the West Coast. But nonetheless, I will be up until the crack of dawn watching the Yankees because I have nothing better to do. So appreciate you guys tuning in as always. And catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.